Hey guys, it's Grant. Lately I've been getting really good ears on my sourdough bread. So I just want to show you how I've been making that happen. Here's my dough. It's been bulk fermenting for about four hours and I think it's done. So uh, the two things I found are important in getting an ear on your bread are the shaping and the slashing or the scoring. Um, I used to think it was just scoring at a shallow angle. Uh, one long slash would get you a good ear on your bread, but ever since I started shaping my dough differently, I've been getting it every time instead of just about half of the time. So I think the shaping is important too. So I'm going to go ahead and take this dough out of the bowl and put it onto the floured surface. So I'm going to pre-shape it into a bowl or a ball like this. Grabbing each end, pulling it in. It's going to pre-shape it into a ball and then we're going to let it rest or bench rest for 30 minutes before we do the shaping. So just showing you each step. Shape it like that. So I think the important part of getting an ear is having a lot of tension on the top of your dough because then when you slash the dough or score the dough it'll bust open in the oven in the ear shape so getting a lot of tension across the top of the dough is the important part of shaping so right now just shape it into a bowl like that cover it we're going to let it rest for a half hour and then come back and do our final shape. Now we're going to do the final shape of our dough and it's going to be in the shape of a batard or an oval. I'm using this oval banneton that I just lined with a bunch of bread flour. Uh, you can use rice flour or whatever you want but I just use bread flour. So that's what we're using. Now usually we get good ears out of batard shaped dough or oval shaped bread uh, because there, we want a lot of tension going like right and left like across the top of the dough. I didn't really used to know how to shape bannetons very, or batards very well, um, but the last couple times I did it this way worked out pretty well. So I'm going to lay it seam side up on some flour, just kind of press it out a little bit. The way I found to do this is actually one of the easiest ways possible. Get your dough looking kind of like a square or a rectangle and fold in one side of the dough and then fold in the other side of the dough creating kind of a seam right there on top and then you're going to roll all the dough just back. Roll it tight. Pinch the seam a little bit. Okay. So it's just kind of like a roll, like a sausage roll or whatever you want to think of. So now the tension should be going this way over the dough. So give it a few kind of pushes on each side. I don't know if this really does what, it, what I think it's doing, but to me, it increases the tension a little bit. So I do that. And then another trick is to take this flap, it's a little flap right here, bend it over, and then tuck it under the dough. Let me do that on the other side. There's a little flap, bend it over, or pull it over and bend it under. And tuck that underneath as well. So now we have a nice oval. Not the prettiest thing on this side, I'll turn it around. Got a pretty nice oval. Now we're going to move into the banneton basket carefully. Flip it over. 
then I put this directly in the fridge overnight, and then I bake it the next morning. Uh, so we'll bake this, score it and bake it tomorrow morning, and you'll see that in just a little bit. Good morning. This dough has now been in the fridge for about 12 hours, slowly proofing. It doesn't puff up very much in the fridge, but I can tell it's been inflating a little bit, so uh, we know the fridge has done its job. Uh, so now, what I'm going to do is turn out the bread onto this parchment paper. I've been using this one for a couple couple different breads, trying to reuse it because I am out of new parchment paper, but you're just going to turn it out onto parchment paper, and then we're going to finally score our loaf before baking it. This side looks better. So, what I usually do is brush all the excess flour off. I've got this little flour brush that came with my banneton actually. So, I brush everything off the sides just so you can see it better. It's all clean from all the excess flour. Just getting a close up here so you can see it a little better. We're about to score, and I just use, I don't use a dough lam or lame or whatever they're called. I just use these razor blades, and I just have been using them straight in my hand. I don't put them in anything else. Um, but you can use a tool if you would like to. So instead of, we're going to make a long slash on the dough. We're going to score it that way. Instead of putting the blade straight and slashing straight, we're going to turn it at an angle. So we're slashing like this. To me, that helps uh, the dough, the ear, kind of rise up in the oven when, uh, when our dough does most of its rising during the oven spring. So if we do it at an angle, we'll get a better ear on our bread. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Press it in. All the way to the edge. Okay. All the way to the edge. And then I sometimes clean it up a little bit. Flip it up. Go through like a second time, just very lightly. That should be good. So this slash is going to turn into our ear in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and put this in my Dutch oven, in an oven that's been preheating to 500 degrees for about half an hour. We're going to bake it in the Dutch oven for 20 minutes and then take the lid off. All right, so in the Dutch oven it goes. Close the lid. I'm going to bake this for 20 minutes. And then after that, we will hopefully see a good ear already. Well, that's my 20 minute timer. Here we go. The moment of truth. I haven't peaked yet, guys. Boom. Look at that. Disregard the horribly dirty bread baking Dutch oven, but look at that year. Okay, 20 more minutes at 500 degrees with the lid off, and this will brown up nicely. Let's go. And that's it. Baked at 20 more minutes at 500 degrees. Got nice and brown on top. I like a little brown, honestly. Some people don't, but I do. Look at that ear. Nice and, nice and crusty. Anyway, that's how to get an ear on your sourdough. Hope you liked the video, guys. If you have any questions about uh, any of the technique I used for the shaping or the scoring or the baking, let me know. I'll actually include uh, the recipe I used in the description box as well. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you liked the video. Uh, let me know what you think.
Okay. 